Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. It's April 13th, 2010, and I'd just like to give you a little recap of Apple's uh, updated MacBook Pros. They refreshed their lineup today, ranging from the 13-inch all the way up to the top of the line 17-inch. And I'd just like to give you a rundown of the new specifications. So the 13-inch MacBook Pro still runs for $1199, and it has a 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo chip. The NVIDIA GeForce 3200M integrated graphics, 4 gigs of RAM, 250 gigabyte hard drive. Now the updated version of that uh, for $1499 has 2.66 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor, the same graphics card, 4 gigs of RAM, a 320 gigabyte hard drive. Um, so not much new there. But what's actually nice is the 15 and 17 inch MacBook Pros were updated with the Core. Uh, line of processors, both the Core i5 and Core i7. So the core processors, the benefits, hyper-threading to create four virtual cores. Unfortunately, it's not; these aren't quad-core chips like I had hoped, uh, but they are an improvement over the Core 2 Duo line. Um, and the Core i5 and i7 also have Turbo Boost, which kicks up the speed when you need it. So when it determines that you need more power, it'll actually uh, overclock itself to give you better performance, up to 3.33 GHz on the high-end Core i7 model. So for $1799, which is $100 more than before, you get a 2.4 GHz Core i5, an Intel HD graphics, NVIDIA GeForce GT 330M with 256 MB of dedicated memory, as well as 4 GB of RAM and a 320 GB hard drive. The next step up at $199 is a 2.53 GHz Core i5, again Intel HD graphics and the NVIDIA GeForce GT 330M. Uh, with 500 and 256 megabytes of RAM, the same 4 gigabytes of RAM for the system, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now the top of the line model, which is actually $100 cheaper than before at $21.99, offers a 2.66 gigahertz Core i7, an Intel HD graphics, and the NVIDIA GeForce GT 330 with 512 megabytes of dedicated RAM, 4 gigabytes of system memory, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and again, it's actually less money than before. The 17-inch model is $200 less than before at $22.99 and offers a 2.53 GHz Core i5, Intel HD graphics, and the NVIDIA GeForce GT 330M with 512 MB of dedicated video RAM, 4 GB of system memory, 500 GB hard drive. And what's nice about these, if you're interested in going SSD, they have options for you ranging up to the 512 GB SD or SSD which is over $1,000 for the upgrade, between $1,300 and $1,400, I believe, depending on what hard drive you're upgrading from. Now, there are a few improvements. Uh, first, let's start off with the displays. Uh, the 13-inch hasn't changed, 1280 by 800 glossy, but the 15-inch is 1440 by 900 glossy, but offers a high-resolution option at 1680 by 1050 for $100 extra, and if you want to make that anti-glare, that's $150 extra. Uh, the 17 inch is the same 1920 by 1200 glossy and 500 or $50 excuse me extra for the anti glare option. Also improved is battery life. They're increasing the performance of these machines, but they're also putting in components that are more efficient um, and a higher capacity battery. So the 13 inch is supposed to last 10 hours, and the 15 and 17 inch with uh, these new graphics cards, these high power chips. Uh, eight to nine hours, which is pretty remarkable for a high-end laptop such as this. Um, let's talk about the trackpad. It's been enhanced. It also has inertial scrolling. So similar to kinetic scrolling on the iPhone, depending on how hard you swipe or whatever, uh, the page registers with that. So you can flick while scrolling, which is nice, and it'll continue to scroll. Now let's talk about graphics performance for a second. I mentioned that the 13-inch uses integrated graphics, and that is the... Uh, GeForce 320M, and this is actually a big improvement over previous integrated graphics because it actually fo has uh, 48 processing cores devoted to graphics performance, which is a nice uh, feature for integrated graphics. The 15 and 17 inches, again, have the GeForce GT 330M uh, with 200, 256 or 500 gigab or megabytes of memory, respectively. But it also features, again, that Intel HD graphics. So what they've done is they now offer automatic graphic switching between the two graphics processing units, depending on what you're doing. So if you're encoding video, watching HD movies, they're going to kick on the dedicated graphics card. You don't have to log out, you don't have to do anything else. But if you want the best battery performance, and you're just reading while you're on a long car trip or a long plane ride, 
it's going to bump down to the integrated graphics, which again, still are good in their own right, but aren't as good for gaming and the like. So those are the improvements to the new MacBook Pro line. There are some price drops, which is always nice, but I'm still waiting for a quad-core mobile. Obviously, that's going to take up a lot of juice, but clearly Apple knows how to do it. Uh, the battery life of these new MacBook Pros is simply remarkable. For a full-featured thing, not a netbook, not a tablet, but a full-featured 17-inch laptop to get 9 hours of battery life is unprecedented, and Apple surely uh, could figure out a solution if they went quad-core, which I had hoped they would do with these new Core i5 and Core i7 chips. Again, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. What is your favorite part of the new MacBook Pro? Is it the graphics? Is it the trackpad? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.